so I'm starting another day with an Amazon grocery delivery because apparently that's what I do on most of these vlogs. So it's just me in the living room as usual pretty much I think this is how I kind of started the previous vlog also and I'm sitting here with my Amazon grocery order I actually woke up on time today because I went to sleep on time uh, but I've just been doing some work in the computer because I've just kind of fallen behind on certain things I got this at like half past noon or so and I thought I'll just sit and open it with you guys and it is Monday today it's actually the last day in November which is a little bit trippy yeah we are going to be in December really soon and I think the last couple of times I've shown you guys groceries I've over explained some things uh, so this time we should be able to get through the groceries quicker this is one loaf of bread 100% whole wheat bread this time we try to avoid white bread but sometimes we get white bread there's Duke's wafy wafers and I've tried so many of these and I just really like buying at least one each time sometimes I buy more but I think the butter flavor is best. It sounds a little bit weird and yucky when you hear butter flavored cream or something. But it's amazing. So now I've just been constantly buying the butter flavor. There's uh, two little bags of milk. I pretty much buy these every time. There's also two little packets of Maggie Instant Poha. Now we can move on to the next bag. This is basically all fresh produce, so yeah, this is very packed. It kind of smells a little weird, but these are fresh leeks and I'm kind of excited because I had never bought leeks in my life before. I, I don't even know if I've tasted them. Maybe I have in some restaurant, but I've definitely never cooked with them. Leek is a vegetable kind of that's part of the onion family only. So it's kind of related to green onions or spring onions or scallions, but it's also a little bit different. I saw it available and it was not too expensive right now. Like the vegetable prices fluctuate a lot, but this was fairly affordable. So like, let me get one packet, which is 100 grams. It's not the best leak, I'm sure, because a couple of the exterior leaves are already kind of degrading a little. Uh, but that's totally fine because based on what I read, you kind of have to trim the exterior leaves off anyway. And you also cut off this root area. So this is very usable. And I might try to use it for dinner today itself. It kind of looks like palm a little bit, na? like uh, the palms you get uh, from Palm Sunday in church. And when you get them, they actually very green but then uh, once you put them up they start to dry naturally i have one bag of tomatoes and this came at the right time i had to make this grocery order mainly because we had actually run out of some vegetables which is really ideal because you don't want to keep buying new vegetables when you still have some old ones uh, but this time it looks like super raw so much of the tomato is yellow and, and there's one straight up green tomato here you think these will ripen Mostly they do, but sometimes they don't. Yeah, and there's actually the stem on this tomato here. <laughs> yeah, we rarely see it like this. This does look adorable. This needs both hands. <laughs> we have a papaya because I always buy a papaya from them. <laughs> One kilo of uh, cucumbers. These are two half kilo packets. Just like having cucumber as a snack. This time the potatoes don't look as good, but I also have a kilo of potatoes but we hadn't run out of potatoes yet no we had oh wow this order came at just the perfect time I finished all. I didn't know this time when I was ordering sadly red capsicum was out of stock and broccoli also was out of stock so I was a little sad about that but obviously I did get some other stuff so you know no big deal and this is the last bag now one packet of bok choy I did feature bok choy in a recent grocery order and then I used it. I'm planning to make like a tantan men tonight and I feel confident about making it because this will be the second time I make it. 
uh, the first time I was really excited and also kind of nervous about trying a new recipe but uh, I think it turned out pretty good. Pok choy is quite nice. I wasn't sure about how it tastes. It's quite mild. It has like a, a greeny vegetable sort of um, flavor or whatever. <laughs> One bag of spring onion. Uh, it looks like whoever was packing the spring onion just kind of gave up on it and was like just get in there I'm gonna fold you and shove you into a really small bag so this looks weirdly sad but this is also one of the ingredients that I'll need for my tantan min though I was kind of wondering whether I should substitute uh, the leeks instead of spring onion because I mean loosely it'll work let's see a uh, one dabba of shrikan from Amul Mango shrikan, so technically Amrakan. We like having this whenever we have chapatis as a little sweet thing in the plate. And then all I have remaining is one dabba of amul butter and one dabba of delecta cheese spread. So now that we're back at the cozy little spot in my bedroom, I can sit and chat with you guys nicely. Uh, so whenever I vlog after a few days, I feel like I always have to fill you guys in on whatever interesting stuff I've been doing on days that I've not been vlogging. So one thing that I did was I finally reported two of my plants that were in temporary potting that I was not really happy with. So the first order of business was to drill holes at the bottom of the planters that I got because I got both of them from IKEA and they don't come with drainage holes which is pretty annoying really. Uh, so this time I convinced myself that I will learn how to use the power drill and I'll just have my dad around uh, to help me uh, or just watch that I'm doing the right thing but at the end my dad only ended up drilling it because both of the pots were pretty solid. One of them was plastic but it was like a thick plastic and the other one was metal and it was not easy to drill into. I could see my dad even really struggling with drilling and he usually does it quite easily so I figured I will learn to drill next time. Uh, once he helped me with that I finally reported the plants in question. Now the first plant, this is a really big planter that I used just because I think that the snake plant uh, has a potential uh, to grow quite a lot. I think I have to add some soil in here. Uh, the plant is still a little bit loose. Here we have uh, my snake plant and snake plant is one of the hardiest plants ever that apparently you can uh, almost never kill so I'm not really worried about this plant. I do need to add some soil to her. The other plant that I'm going to show you guys, please don't judge me but she's in a really sorry state. This is actually an arrowhead plant also known as Syngonium but there's not one single open leaf here. It's just completely bald and that's because the plant already arrived in a really bad state and even though I tried taking care of it it was just dying even though I was watering it it kept on drying and multiple like vines as well as leaves just kept on drying and falling off don't really know what I was doing wrong so ultimately I just tried repotting it and I pruned off a lot of the leaves uh, some of the vines or the stalks or whatever just fell out on their own and this is what I'm left with. Now there's a very very good chance that this plant will die. I've accepted that but I also feel like it's showing some signs of life. Also I had been clearing up a lot of the books from my room for a really long time and I didn't really know what to do with many of the books because I knew that I'm not gonna reread these. I just had too many uh, from my stage in high school and college where I used to just go to bookstores and buy a lot of books. And many of them were just one-time reads. Many of them I feel like I had outgrown. Like I do enjoy some children's books still, but largely I can't really reread children's books. They don't have that much in there for me. And I had originally thought I would donate them to my school's library because I remember really enjoying reading in the library. And I also remember that they didn't have a really good selection of books. And many of them were just really, really old, probably from the 70s and 80s. So. But my school's been closed due to COVID largely and I didn't really know if they would accept a book donation right now. So ultimately I found this NGO through Twitter and I got all my books together. There were two big boxes of books. I got in contact with them and they very kindly sent somebody to pick the stuff up. 
and just this morning they actually put out a tweet uh, thanking me for the book donation which made me feel really nice the reason i'm mentioning this whole thing to you guys also is that if you have any books really that are in a good condition uh, that you think people would like to read and you are in mumbai you should get in touch with this ngo it's called let's read india and i'm going to leave uh, their social media and website and all in the description bar because they seem to be doing really good work and the thing is that even though you know there are readers out there who appreciate books and maybe don't really have the means to purchase their own it kind of becomes complicated to find the right people who would be interested so very often i've had really nice stuff that i know someone would like somewhere but i've not been able to find a person and ultimately you just end up giving it to like the bangarwala or whoever like the recycling guy that's just a failure so i was happy that my books found a new home and i really hope people will read and enjoy them you know and now it is the last vlog of november november has not really been that great of a vlogging month but anyway i want to thank you guys for uh, sticking with me for another month and a special shout out to every single person uh, who has stayed a member of my channel because you guys rock i really appreciate you all and you support me directly and help me uh, create more regular content so the previous to last vlog you guys must have um, watched that maybe the one before i went out you'll know that i had some glitch with my video footage at the end and a lot of um, what i had recorded like there was a hall and i was talking to you guys so much of it was unusable because it did record the video but for some reason there was no sound at all it's never happened before in like two years or more of having this camera and mic setup it was a little bit disheartening so other than the haul one update that i had given to you guys in that vlog which ultimately i could not include was that i had told you guys i'm going to be doing my room makeover in the month of november and you guys are going to see the finished room in december and all of that so i did make some headway there and i did clear up some of the stuff and i made some good progress but then i actually realized that um, there's one internal wall of my room in a small area that has some like water seepage some dampness and i have no idea how it got water seepage it's very random and it's a small area really but it's so random because it's not an external wall neither is it directly next to any bathroom it just it connects the bedroom and the passage that's when i realized that my dream of doing a fully diy room makeover is not going to happen and i'm going to have to get a contractor in my room to um, deal with the water damage at least i can still paint and i'm going to do that but i will also have to get some professional help and when i first realized that it kind of made me sad and set me into like a uh, just really random sad spiral i felt like I was letting myself down and I was also letting you guys down because I promised something and I'm not going to be able to deliver it. And then I just took a deep breath and I said there's no use feeling sad over something that we can't control. My room makeover is still very much happening but it's a little bit on hold for now and it's not going to be ready in time for December obviously. Neither uh, will it probably be done in January, but it is something that I will <laughs> continue. in jan most probably because i have certain plans for this month and i'm planning like more videos and all uh, which is nice i'm really excited about it but i probably won't be able to devote that much time to my room that's what i wanted to say thank you guys for listening and right now i have quite a few amazon things so i'll just bring them over here and then we'll have an unboxing so i have all of the stuff we're going to unbox over here today there are some small miscellaneous things that i've been purchasing in these smaller boxes and packets that you see on top there is one big pantry box that we will get to at the end let's see what's in this first packet so what i have here is just one snb sesame salt this is a repurchase you might recall this from another vlog a couple of months ago i think snb is actually a japanese brand that's really famous for making different kind of table condiment and i bought quite a few things from this brand so i also recommend their nanami togarashi which is a really mild spice mix and then there's this other thing called layu which is just basically 
a chili oil and sesame oil blend that's really amazing i'm gonna leave links to those also in the description uh, but this sesame salt is just what the name suggests it's a blend of roasted sesame and sea salt and apparently this is not really too hard to diy also so i was thinking i might diy it next time uh, but my mom really really likes the salt and she usually uh, tops her cucumber with it and we finished the first jar and so I just uh, picked up another one uh, because it's really nice. Ooh, other than the sesame and salt, it also has a little monosodium glutamate or MSG, which is a flavoring agent. It's a little bit controversial because some people say it's not good for health. But uh, I've also read articles that say it's absolutely fine in moderation as long as you're not a baby. And it also really enhances the taste and gives nice flavor. I think it's really good and you can get a peek into the inside over here. What I have here is just a pair of earrings that I purchased from Accessorize. So this is kind of a repurchase in a way because I own these same earrings. I actually own two pairs of them already, the exact same ones but with a gold plating. Here it is in gold. I'll leave a link to the gold one also. I purchased this gold one before. And there's another pair of uh, these gold plated bamboo hoops that's in the other room right now that I've been wearing for over two years or maybe almost three years. And I really, really like it. I usually don't buy artificial jewelry but the plating quality of it is just so so good that even though it's been exposed to air a lot the plating has still held on really well the first pair which i wear more regularly the plating is sort of um, discoloring and getting black in a few places but i'm not ready to throw it out when i do get rid of that one i have the backup in gold and now i have the silver option for days where i'm wearing more silver jewelry these are supposed to be bamboo hoops because if you look closely, uh, the hoop is kind of textured. It's not just a plain metallic hoop and it also doesn't close the full way. It's sort of a C-shaped hoop that goes like this and then ends somewhere here. And the full price of these is really expensive. One pair costs 1,945 rupees. Uh, but online on Amazon, they are on such heavy discount. That if you guys have uh, seen these earrings on me and you've liked them i would say go buy them they are a steal and they will last you a really long time uh, just probably take them out when you're done wearing them they're big anyway so they're not the kind of earrings you wear all the time they are earrings that yeah, you put on when you want to wear them and then you take them off when you get back home or whatever you know and they look really stylish. I think they go very nicely for ethnic wear as well. If you don't like earrings that are really big. These look stylish and celebratory. But they also look um, subtle. Which is what I like. Now we're going to open this small little box. Oh, so what I have in here is an eye mask that I bought from Garnier. It's for the under eye region. As you guys can see at the bottom of the pack. And this is something that's available in India but it's uh, imported. I, I saw this online and it makes some really really tall promises. So I thought I would just purchase it and I might review it on my main channel really soon. Uh, let me know if that's something you guys would like to see. There is another variant also of the mask available which I've already ordered. But that one will come in a few days. Now it's time for this box. A household cleaner this is by mr muscle and it's basically an oven cleaner so we have mr muscle as a brand available in india also as far as i know um this one also i bought online in india but it is an imported cleaning product from uk basically um the chimney lights out on top of our gas stove gave out randomly one day and i got really worried but i managed to open up and reinstall new chimney lights it was not hard at all uh, but when I opened up the chimney, I realized that um, certain like the inside parts of the grate and all has a lot of grease. So we tried cleaning it, but the grease is really, really stubborn. And so I went online and ended up getting this oven cleaner because this is something that particularly targets grease. 
hopefully it will work well like it's not for our oven because our oven's pretty clean it does have some burn marks but it's not greasy at least burn marks can't really be helped i mean it gets hot it gets these black burn stains can't really do anything about that i know exactly what's in here and i'm very very excited to open it so what i have in here is this seaweed based snack from thailand called uh, takenoi i think that's how it's pronounced now i first discovered this seaweed snack when i had gone to bangkok on my own a few years ago and then i bought a lot of snacks there and when i came back i did a tasting video with my mum i'm going to link it over there we both tried a lot of different snacks and takenoi was one of them if you've been to bangkok you'll know that this is a snack you can get in pretty much every corner 711 and just everywhere and if you go to certain malls uh, with this brand takenoi or whatever has become so big that uh, they have shops that just sell their stuff and uh, it's basically a toasted seaweed snack with a little bit of flavoring you can get a plain one also uh, the flavor that i got is original flavor yeah they have some nice uh, seafood flavors also that i think i'll buy next time this made me so happy because this is something i really enjoy uh, whenever i go to bangkok and now there's a pretty big range of this stuff available on amazon if you guys have been interested in uh, tasting toasted seaweed snacks you should try this because it's yummy it's a little bit of an acquired taste because it's very vegetarian unless you get one of the non veg flavors but otherwise this is vegetarian but it kind of uh, smells a little bit fishy but it's not fish and uh, other than being yummy it's apparently quite nutritious if you actually look at the packet by weight this is just 32 grams so it ends up being expensive for 32 grams but it's a very flavorful snack and this is again something that i would recommend you should try once like i like being a little bit adventurous about food you may love it you may hate it but it doesn't cost too much and you know try it once here's one of the last bag shady other than the pantry box and this one also i do remember exactly what it is and i'm actually very excited to open it so what i have in here are some like photo accessories from fuji film and a few months ago i was part of fuji films campaign for their new square format camera and i did also review that camera on my main channel if you guys would like to see it i'll link it over there so i'm sure most of you guys will know what fuji film instax cameras are a lot of times they are known as polaroid though they are actually completely different but they are those instant cameras that you find at a lot of parties where you click the photo and then the film comes out and develops in front of your eyes I don't have the Instax wide camera but I've had an Instax mini for pretty much a decade and now I have um, the square camera as well. So this is what an Instax mini print looks like and I have albums for the Instax mini. Now this is what a square print looks like which is bigger and I didn't really know where to put the square photos that I had so I just said kept them in one dabba. But now I saw that Fuji Film released a lot of interesting accessories uh, for square photos, so I picked some of them up. The first thing here is just basically a square photo album. This is a little bit like it's nice. It's plasticky. It's not very luxurious or anything. It kind of feels like a plastic file folder, and this one will hold seventy-two photos. quite good i think I also have over here a tin which you can use uh, to keep the photos in and yes you can repurpose any other small size tin you have for instax photos but this one is made for the square format so obviously it's going to just fit perfectly I can show you guys right now so i think this is a really nice accessory to carry with you if you have the square camera and uh, you take photos with it when you're out and about you want to take care of the photos you can just uh, slip them into this tin and then when you come home later you could place them in an album you will want to take care of these photos you don't have a digital copy of them so the physical print is all that you have really 
So if you watched the last vlog already where we went out to eat, I carried the square camera with me because I wanted to take more photos and make more memories. And when we reached the restaurant and I wanted to take a picture of my mum, I was like, okay, are you ready? And I'm getting the camera ready. Then I realized I had taken out the batteries. And uh, the batteries were at home, but the camera was with me. So that was a huge fail because I checked that there's film in it, but I did not check uh, that there weren't batteries. And I wish I could tell you guys that that was the first time it has happened, but no. There are so many times that I have not carried batteries or not carried um, SD cards for various cameras. It happened to me with my drone also. I have traveled with my drone and it didn't have the micro SD card. Same thing with cameras. I think uh, the camera battery is really heavy. So I will usually have the battery. But very often I won't have a card. And the camera does not have any inbuilt storage. So if there's no card, then you can't take any photos. And now it's time to open up this box. I'm struggling with it a little bit. It says here that it's 5.3 kilos. fair amount of things in today's pantry haul and honestly the majority of the stuff here is by Maggie because for some reason I felt like we were running out of Maggie noodles and it is winter time now which is when I like eating noodles a little bit more often I guess so I just bought a little too much Maggie the first few things that I have in here are basically Maggie pasta I remember trying these when they first came out. They are Maggie's instant pasta, but I must have been in like school back then and I definitely have not tried it since then. So I think there are about four flavors available now. And I thought it would be fun to do another tasting video with these, like how I did with those other Maggie noodles, like new flavors. So the flavors here are mushroom penne, there's cheese macaroni, there's masala penne. And there's also cheesy tomato twist. Some of these pasta flavors are reviewed a little better than the other ones. Uh, but obviously I bought all because that is the whole point of a tasting video. Trying all of the different buns really. And then I also bought some more of these Dabar homemade chutneys which have been there in uh, quite a few of my recent pantry hauls. Because I think they're quite tasty. So I got two more of the Kalonji tomato chutney which is sweet. And then I got two of the uh, Rajasthani garlic chutney. Here it is, which is spicy. I love this one. It is a little bit pungent, but you can just take a little of it. And it's also very, very flavorful. The last time I was purchasing, this one was out of stock and I was sad. These are my two favorite of the chutney flavors. There is a third one also called Dilli Ki Chatpati Chutney, I think. But I don't like that one. I think it's just because it's a coriander chutney. The texture is weird. It's a little bit tangy. So I would not recommend that one. But these two are really nice. Then I also have one packet of just sesame. There are so many different sesames available. Ultimately, I just went with this one that said uh, whole white sesame. Because there's this bleached one available also. But given a choice, why would I buy a bleached one? So I just realized that there's quite a big price difference between white sesame, which is quite cheap. And then you have black sesame, which is quite a lot more expensive. And I don't know why that is, but I'm very curious to know. I think I should go look it up and see if I'm able to get any information on the matter. And then I also have some <laughs> more wafer. You guys saw it at the grocery part of the haul also, but this is chocolate wafer. And I actually have um, two packets of chocolate wafer. What fun. Uh, one packet of um, Maggie's regular like chicken noodles. It's very hard to get these chicken noodles. I don't know why that is uh, because there are a lot of people who aren't vegetarian in India. But even when Maggie releases new flavors of things, they just don't release um, any flavors besides vegetarian ones maybe those just sell better and maybe they're less controversial but yeah at least i can get the chicken one online it's a nice change from having the masala one all of the time you know 
And then I got a pouch packet of Delmon's uh, tomato ketchup because our tomato ketchup got over. <laughs> so I bought more tomato ketchup. This is almost a liter. It's 950 grams and it's just really handy. And then the last thing in here is just more Maggie. But these are 12 single packs of Maggie and these are just a regular masala flavor. Um, again, this is something that I really like and I'll have it uh, just like that as a quick snack. Or there are ways that I jazz up a Maggie by adding some different veggies and stuff. And then that just makes it more interesting and a little bit more like a meal. So in that case, you're almost using Maggie as like a pasta or like plain noodles, you know because you're adding a lot of different masala you're adding different veggies it's nice again you get bored of just eating maggie the same way so you need to find different ways to eat it we've unboxed so much of stuff so if you have watched until here then you know thank you <laughs> this is not the end of today's vlog though because i will bring you guys along to the kitchen when i'm preparing today's dinner because most of the time mummy has been preparing the dinners sometimes i help her a little bit but today's dinner will be mostly my work mommy will help me with prep having a quick little light lunch so there's a little bit of chole there are some wonderfully flaky chapatis and this is something that i'm utterly obsessed with this sola puri chutney i purchased this on amazon recently maybe about a week to 10 days ago and when it arrived i really wanted to eat it right away so i didn't leave it for the haul but this is even better now because i've been eating it for a few days i bought the half kilo dabba and i can give you guys a little bit of a review i'm obsessed with this okay so i purchased this when i was on the search for the maharashtran style uh, sukha chutney the dry chutney that they no pony no the sukha chutney that they put inside of vada pav uh, which is kind of more a uh, garlic based i think and more salty now this is almost nothing like that so this is a peanut chutney with garlic there's a without garlic version available also i guess if you're jain uh, you don't eat garlic or maybe you just don't prefer it and it looks spicy i was expecting spicy because it literally comes from like interior maharashtra which has a reputation for spicy but it's extremely mild and it's just more nutty with the peanuts with a hint of spice and hint of garlic and i am amazed at how this actually goes with everything so right now i'm eating it dry only with chapati and this actually goes with rice also and anything like as a dry pickle on the side and i tried eating this with dosa that's where it actually shown when i ate it with dosa because if you take an additional step and just uh, take it in a katori or something and mix it with warm ghee just it's a little lumpy as you guys can see so if you just mash it with the ghee a bit it becomes a wet chutney and it's out of this world good so i thoroughly recommend this one and next time i'll probably get the 1 kilo for tasting i got the 500 grams but there are many different sizes available if you would also like to try them so since i last talked to you guys i chilled a bit a lot of chai has been had also and now it's time to get to the kitchen and get cooking so today i'm making tan tan men noodles which is i think the japanese version of chinese dan dan noodles anyway it's a type of ramen that's actually not too complicated because otherwise i really like ramen but all of the recipes kind of intimidate me and so i would only eat it out and i've vlogged a couple of times when i've gone out and eaten ramen pre pandemic of course but the restaurant that i loved shut down in february unfortunately Uh, so I am following Dap Devi's recipe. I'm gonna leave her um, Instagram page in the description. I've talked about her before. So since it's my second time making this, I'm actually somewhat cool and confident compared to last time. And I'm making a couple of substitutions where she says to use sesame paste. I'm gonna use peanut butter. I did that last time also. And instead of the spring onion, I'm just gonna use leek because we have leek now. And now you guys are gonna see um, the utensils, I guess. I don't know if you'll notice but I mentioned we changed the chimney lights they used to be really warm so whenever I would show you guys my cooking it would just look like really yellow at one level it kind of distorted the natural color of the food but the second level it was also like very cozy and like almost romantic you know and um, this light is more white so you see the natural colors but it's not as cozy but let's go because my camera's at a weird height and i'm actually bending my knees and this is getting pretty uncomfortable <laughs>
here is the tantanmen all done and i think it looks really nice in the sense that uh, yeah it doesn't make a pretty picture really uh, but all of the components are super tasty and even the broth is very soupy and this is the perfect slightly wintry meal everybody got such full bowls today this is definitely a repeat recipe and i'm surprised at how much quicker it went this time because i was not referring to uh, the recipe every 2 minutes i don't know uh, it's actually not as elaborate as i thought it was and i think by the third time it will just become so much quicker also so i am going to enjoy this right now and this is where i say bye to you guys and i almost forgot to mention but i bought this bowl a little while ago from nikobar and when i say a little while i mean like a couple of years it is a ramen bowl and i'm very excited today because it's the first time i'm using it for its proper intended purpose